Okay, if I could ask those leaving the public gallery to do so as quickly and as quietly as possible as we move on to the next item of business, uh, which is a debate on motion 11294 in the name of Graham Simpson on antisocial behaviour on buses. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Um, I'd invite members wishing to participate to press the request to speak buttons uh, now. And I invite Graham Simpson to open the debate. Uh, Mr Simpson, around seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I uh, thank all the members who signed the motion? And I'm looking forward to hearing all the contributions today. We're having this debate on the day that the government has issued its evaluation report into the scheme's first year. Now, unfortunately, that was nearly a year ago, so the report is uh, somewhat out of date. However, we should be clear that the scheme has been a success. And as we heard earlier, um, over 100 million journeys have been taking, taken using the scheme. Parliament was and is united over the scheme. It's a good thing to encourage young people to use public transport. It's a good thing to help them get to school, college, university and to work. And if nothing else gets them into the habit of using a bus. And we would hope that they would continue to do so once they have to pay. And when they do have to pay, it's our view that uh, fares should be cheaper with a cap on how much you pay and that it should be simpler. But back to the under-22 scheme. While it has been a success overall, there have been issues with a minority, and it is a minority, of those using it. Now, you would expect that. Not everyone knows how to behave. And today's report recognises this. Um, in focus group discussions, there was evidence that 90% of respondents who experienced antisocial behaviour experienced excessive loud shouting and or swearing. 67% of respondents who experienced antisocial behaviour experienced people under the influence of alcohol or drugs. And we know from bus operators who have reported issues which include physical and verbal assaults on drivers, physical and verbal assaults and threatening behaviour towards other passengers, broken windows, emergency doors being opened and damaged, and vandalised buses. Damage and vandalism results in increased costs to operators with vehicles being taken off the road for repairs. Passengers and potential passengers may be deterred from travelling by bus and at a time when driver recruitment still remains a key industry challenge, could contribute to people leaving the industry or not joining it at all. And in, the, in addition to incidents on board buses, there's, there's a perception that the scheme may have also contributed towards increased antisocial behaviour in and around bus stations or in other locations, such as shopping centres. The Scottish Government's Behaviour in Scottish Schools 2023 report identifies that, and I quote, the ability of young people to travel for free on buses had, in some cases, led to young people travelling to other areas of the city to take part in fights or meeting up on buses and engaging in antisocial behaviour. Local authority representatives also raised safeguarding concerns that young people may be travelling far from their homes to meet with people without their parents' knowledge." End of quote. And there was a recent briefing that I'm aware of for elected members in Edinburgh in which they heard of teenagers from Motherwell, Glasgow, Inverness and Fife who'd been travelling to the capital to carry out antisocial behaviour using their under-22s free bus passes. Business owners, retail staff, shoppers and residents in Brunsfield and Morningside have experienced vandalism, theft, intimidation, physical and verbal abuse. During Operation Crackle in the capital between November the 3rd and November the 5th, Lothian buses suffered uh, £1,700 worth of broken windows. And that's just in three days. In Livingston earlier this year, councillors claimed that the under-22 free bus pass scheme had fueled a rise in disorder with young people travelling to the centre, the town centre, from Edinburgh and Fife intent on causing trouble. And they say that this had been a particular problem on Friday afternoons when schools have finished early. There have been reported issues elsewhere, 
The boss of the Overgate shopping centre in Dundee said youths travelling in from outside had caused mayhem. The shopping centre suffered £80,000 of damage in 18 months. I've seen a quite shocking video of an horrific attack on a bus passenger in Presswick in which he was dragged off the bus and kicked and punched to the ground. And the issue has been raised by other members in this chamber. In October last year, Willie Coffey raised an attack on a 14-year-old boy in Kilmarnock. And the then uh, Justice Secretary Keith Brown said at the time, quote, the Scottish Government is open to considering all options for tackling antisocial behaviour. For example, I will raise the issue with those who are responsible for the bus pass scheme to gather views on whether the option of withdrawing bus passes, which has been mentioned elsewhere, might present a solution. Of course, nothing has happened, and that can have serious consequences for communities. We've seen bus companies, quite understandably, removing services altogether. In fact, in Edinburgh, all services were, were removed for a night in 2021, which did have the desired effect for a while, but only for a while. Now, the government's argument, and we'll hear from the minister at the end, is that it's too difficult to remove the free travel element from the national entitlement card. But under the National Bus Travel Concession Scheme for Young Persons, Scotland Order 2021, ministers can withdraw or suspend a travel card if a holder allows someone else to use it or, and this is quoting from the order, in other such circumstances as they may determine. Now, I would have thought that committing antisocial behaviour while on a bus or having used a bus could fall into that category. Abuse it and you should lose it. The Minister should not rule out taking action. It doesn't have to mean a permanent ban. She could look at suspension. Remember, that's in the order. Or perhaps a curfew. Other members may well touch on these ideas. Deputy Presiding Officer, some bus companies and drivers have simply given up on recording data. Lothian buses do keep figures, and what they show is that there's been a significant increase in antisocial behaviour since the introduction of the scheme. They're at record levels throughout the country. Operators have reported staff being assaulted, drivers being spat on, physical assault and racial harassment. Bus companies, their staff and passengers should not have to tolerate that. If the culprits hold a free travel card, then they're abusing a privilege paid for by the taxpayer, and that should not continue. Thank you, Mr Simpson. We now move to the open debate. I call first Ben McPherson to be followed by Sue Webber. Around four minutes, Mr McPherson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I also welcome this debate. I think it's a very serious issue, and it's something that we should be discussing together, uh, building on a, an important debate just a number of weeks ago on considerations around antisocial behaviour in our schools. I recognise the problem from my casework, uh, from my engagement with Lothian Buses, which uh, are, are headquartered in my constituency on Annandale Street. But I'm also conscious that uh, members may uh, be aware that I take the bus and other public transport very often. Um, and also, uh, this applies to, to ScotRail too, uh, for longer trips out of the city. And over recent months and years, I've seen antisocial behaviour on our buses and our trains, whether that's lots of noise, feet on seats, uh, people eating food that has odours that aren't very pleasant to be around, uh, people leaving litter, uh, people listening to music or watching TV on their mobile devices without headphones, uh, people under the influence in a, and behaving in a way that's, that's not uh, respectful to those around them, and intimidation uh, to others. And I've seen this behaviour from a lot of people over the age of 22, over that time. And I want to make that point because not discounting 
the concerns that we have collectively in our constituencies and regions about antisocial behaviour from a minority of young people. I actually think in our country, particularly post-pandemic, there's a, there's a wider consideration that we need to think about together and, and, and think really carefully about solutions uh, and about behaviour change with regard to antisocial behaviour more generally. So I can see, given the, the examples that are reported around a minority of young people on our public transport on occasion engaging in antisocial behaviour, but actually it's antisocial behaviour more widely and a concerning increase in that that I think collectively we need to uh, be engaged in focusing on what solutions might make a difference as a parliament. So if we're going to consider the potential suspension or removal or temporary suspension of entitlement to travel cards for young people, I think it would actually only be right to consider that if it also applied to those of other ages who use our public transport and have entitlement. We can't single out young people. And actually, um, while you know, that might be a, some, a, a solution that we might want to think about um, and keep under review, there are wider and deeper questions I think we need to ask ourselves about support for our young people, making sure there's adequate youth work provision and helping our young people to engage in better behaviour and looking at how do we engage role models, how do we engage popular culture to help us encourage young people to, to do what the majority of young people do, um, which is uh, contribute positively to society and to uh, be respectful of those around them. So it's an important debate, but let's not single out our young people Let's keep this under review and think carefully about how we make a positive difference and remember the, the good behaviour of the majority of young people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McPherson. And I call Sue Weber to be followed by Daniel Johnson. Around four minutes, Ms. Weber. Uh, thanks, presiding officer. It doesn't come as any surprise, actually, to see as many Lothian MSPs here today. We do have the best bus service, I think, that's the envy of many across the country, but there are serious issues. And uh, just quickly to address Mr McPherson's point, uh, I, was, I too get the bus regularly and on Tuesday night I was subject to what I would call antisocial behaviour targeted at me by a very, well, an, an elderly man who started blowing kisses and all sorts of noises and harassment towards me. And frankly, I didn't quite know what to do. I put my headphones on and just kept my head down. So there needs to be something for all of us to be able to do when those things happen. And I really want to thank uh, my colleague Graham Simpson for bringing this debate before Parliament today. I spoke there about what I was subject to this week, but a number of years ago I was uh, on the bus on Princess Street where I got on, and quite reasonably uh, the, there was a number of youths on that bus that were making me feel quite intimidated. This was on the first floor of the double-decker, the ground floor, I don't know what you call that, but uh, they were vaping quite publicly on that bus in front of a very packed bus because it was Christmas time and I asked them to stop and they then proceeded to make a big show of inhaling that vapour, puffing it in my face and saying I was exactly the sort of person who is a Karen. Drivers and passengers on Lothian buses should not have to endure abuse from disrespectful, intimidating youths. And you can see how incidents like that could easily turn into something more serious. I was concerned as to making sure they were getting off the bus before I got off the bus, because I didn't want to have to get off the bus and then follow me. So it was a very, very scary uh, incident. And we've heard teenagers from other parts of Scotland are using their free bus passes to come to Edinburgh to cause trouble. Police officers have recently attended a meeting with retailers in the southwest of Edinburgh to discuss a spate of antisocial behaviour in the area. And they have said that individuals are coming from Motherwell, Glasgow and Inverness, as Mr Simpson said, to come to the capital causing problems, criminality and antisocial behaviour. They're using their bus passes, whereas before this didn't happen because they didn't have the means to get there. Unfortunately, police said there was nothing more they could do to stop them. And I've heard these concerns from two of my council colleagues 
In Edinburgh, they have raised concerns of youth coming to the Craig Leith retail park from St and Stockbridge from across the city and further afield to cause trouble. These incidents are often organised by social media apps like Snapchat, and parents do not know where their children have been or where they are going. And uh, we have already heard again from Graham Simpson about what the situation in West Lothian, where youths were coming from Edinburgh and Fife uh, using their bus passes to come to Livingston and the centre. And uh, ultimately, the, the centre was closed on Friday afternoons to anyone under the age, if I recall correctly, I think it was 18. And that's not where we want to be, because there are so many young people that are not abusing that. And that sort of blanket ban is not helpful for anyone. In Edinburgh, uh, in October, several buses were forced to divert from, the busy, from a very busy neighbourhood. The buses were unable to serve Nidry Mains Road and Peffer Mill Road for nearly two hours on a Saturday night. So imagine the impact across the entire community to everyone, to all ages, those that are vulnerable, that really rely on the public service, public transport in Edinburgh, because it is critical to how we all get around the city. Um, Lothian buses have said that there is a zero tolerance approach to antisocial behaviour and will not hesitate to remove services from particular areas for a period of time to keep our colleagues and customers safe. But customers aren't then able to use the services. There needs to be another way to tackle this. And I'm conscious of time, so I will cut to... I am a bit of a believer that we've got young people that use the buses, particularly in Edinburgh, their Lothian buses, to get to school, to get to jobs, to get to colleges. And I think a curfew is an answer not a cull or a ban, because we need them to still get to school and take part in education and employment. And with that, uh, presiding officers, I will close my speech and remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Weber. I now call Daniel Johnson to be followed by Sharon Dowie. Around four minutes, Mr. Johnson. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I apologise to you and the Chamber? I, I will need to leave early from this debate because I have a, a group of young people uh, waiting for me. Can I just uh, assure everyone that they are not uh, caught up in any of this? Uh, by any sense, they're, they're, they're modern studies pupils and, and very conscientious. Uh, but uh, look, the, I think I would thank Graham Simpson both for bringing this debate forward, but also actually to every member who's spoken so far. And actually, there's a bit of a, a usual band of suspects of people that I think are calmly and unflinchingly looking at this problem. And I think this is exactly that, what is required. I don't think it does any service to anyone to be histrionic or uh, alarmist about this, but neither does it do anyone any good if we don't actually look and exa examine in a calm manner what is going on and what we might be able to do about it. And I, and I think that's what I hear so far uh, this afternoon, and I think that is very encouraging, because I think we need to do a few things. I think we do need to be clear about the problem. I think we need to think about the options that we uh, uh, have to deal with it. I think we do need to look at who... Uh, uh, this might be. But I think actually perhaps the most important point is there are elements of this, and I think Ben McPherson alluded to this, that aren't new. I, I remember antisocial behaviour when I was a, a teenager. Uh, you know, it, it, I remember people smoking at the back of the bus, swearing, graffiti, those sorts of things. These are perennial problems, and nor are the problems confined just to young people. But it does strike me that there is a, an emergent problem o off the back of what, and Graham Simms is absolutely right, I think we have to say first and foremost that the, 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 the free bus travel for young people is undoubtedly a good thing. It's an empowering thing. Um, but it has also, I think, led to a phenomenon uh, of young people travelling quite far and wide in order to, to carry out antisocial behaviour. I think we should also be very clear that that doesn't necessarily mean that, that, that it's even a proportion of young people. It's not. It's a very, very small group of people. When you talk to the police, I mean, they talk about these groups being measured in the dozens that are, are carrying out this sort of behaviour. But, but as Sue Weber pointed out, that is leading to consequences that impact everyone. Bus routes being closed down, uh, under 18s being banned from leisure venues such as bowling alleys and so on and so forth causing real issues uh, in, in local areas. And that's why I've now held two different meetings with police and local retailers in my constituency. Uh, and that's because of that problem. So I think we do need to look at it. We need to look at the interaction between the, the, the use of uh, the bus passes and social media, and it is a, a, a complex problem. I think the next thing is, I think we do need to look at the options. And I'm definitely someone that believes in that you have to couple rights with responsibilities. And I think what would be interesting is to peel apart a little bit that principle, because I think uh, uh, possibilities such as curfews, I think, is one thing. 
temporary withdrawals. Because uh, uh, I, I completely agree, we don't want to make the situation worse by uh, punishing people and then perhaps tipping them into patterns of behaviour that actually make, uh, exacerbate the problem. But nonetheless, I think we should be thinking about there being consequences. I, but I think we need to think about that in, uh, separately in terms of the principle is separate from the practicalities, because I recognise the two are not necessarily the same, and it would be interesting to hear from the Minister discussing this. And I think, secondly, we do need to also look at this within broader issues. I think there is an issue about the balance of policing between response and community officers and specialist centralised divisions. I, I wonder if we need to look at that. I think, more broadly, I am keen on looking at what we can do to expand the range of non-criminal interventions. I'm not a fan of criminalising people, but I am a, a keen to look at what you can do that might just deter people, inconvenience them, create consequences for behaviour that's not acceptable. But finally, I would just say this. I think Ben McPherson also highlighted on another issue. This is part of a wider societal problem around down to social behaviour, because it's not just uh, bus uh, travel and, and use. There's also retail crime, violence against retail workers. Uh, there, there is, we are seeing a, a spiralling issue of antisocial and indeed at times violent behaviour that we all need to take seriously. Thank you very much and thank you for your forbearance in allowing me to, to leave early. Thank you, Mr Johnson. I'm sure the Modern Studies pupils will be very grateful for the collective uh, character reference that you've put on the record. Um, I now call Sharon Dowie to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Around four minutes, Ms Dowie. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you to my colleague, Graham Simpson, for bringing such an important issue forward for debate. There's no doubt that antisocial behaviour in buses has increased dramatically since the introduction of the free bus travel scheme. And this has been an issue locally in my region. The Scottish Government Transport Minister was contacted by the Community Council on behalf of the residents of Dundonald in South Ayrshire. Local people said, and I quote, Our village has seen a dramatic rise in youth disorder with several residents being attacked, fires being raised and many residents, some elderly and some disabled, being verbally abused and threatened by groups of youths. They added that evidence from our area would suggest that there is a direct correlation in the rise of youth disorder and free bus travel. I am sure MSPs across the Chamber have similar examples from their own areas of physical assaults, verbal abuse, threatening behaviour, broken windows and vandalism. In each case, there is a strong evidence of a link to the free bus travel scheme. We do not know the full extent of this problem because the SNP Government does not appear to collect the data. In responses to parliamentary questions, I have only been told that they collect general crime statistics and an evaluation of the scheme will consider the impact of antisocial behaviour. However, the Confederation of Passenger Transport Scotland, the trade association for the bus and coach sectors, have confirmed that there is no currently official data set to capture incidents of antisocial behaviour on buses. The Government must start again to gain a better understanding of the problems related to this scheme. At the moment, the SNP do not seem to want the true extent of antisocial behaviour to be uncovered, but we do know it is happening. The Scottish Government's own Behaviour in Scottish Schools 2023 report said that the ability of young people to travel for free on buses had, in some cases, led to young people travelling to other areas of the city to take part in fights or meeting up in buses and engaging in antisocial behaviour. We, we also know that the Government have not acted to stop these incidents. They seem to be saying that they are powerless to prevent these crimes. Despite all the evidence of this antisocial behaviour, despite the increasing costs to bus operators, despite the buses taken off the roads, despite the passengers being driven away from services, despite drivers being attacked, despite all of that, the SNP still are not taking this issue seriously enough. They have stalled and delayed instead of finding a way to withdraw access to the scheme to the minority of people that are abusing it. I thank my colleague Graeme Simpson for raising awareness of this issue. And now it is up to the SNP government to act on what they have heard today and take action. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dowie. And I call Fulton McGregor to be followed by Alexander Burnett. Around four minutes, Mr. McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. Um, I apologise to the Chamber because I didn't actually intend to speak today, but I feel compelled when hearing Graeme Simpson's completely unbalanced opening speech and backed up by his colleagues, although, however, other speakers 
Ben McPherson and Daniel Johnson uh, were a completely different. It is fair to say that the behaviour described by Mr Simpson is not tolerable, and of course we should do something about it. But Ben McPherson is right. It is not just confined to our young people. It is, it is, and I think Daniel Johnson raised it as well. This behaviour on buses or public transport is something that has been inherent in Scotland and probably worldwide for a long time. But why I want to speak today, President Officer, is because Mr Simpson's speech, and I expected it to be more balanced, completely vilified a group in society, an already marginalised group in society, without a voice. And he was quite generalised, and that is our young people. Happy to. Graham Simpson. I thank Fulton McGregor for taking the intervention. Um, I was very clear, and other speakers have been very clear, that we're only talking about a very small minority of people who are abusing this scheme. We've been very, very clear about that. Um, and we would also agree with Ben McPherson, who says antisocial behaviour is not confined to young people. It can, it can be older people as well. So I made those points in my speech. It was not unbalanced. Fulton McGregor, I can give you time. I, 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 I accept uh, what, what Mr Simpson is saying, but I didn't think he was very clear. And I wonder what young people and organisations who support young people might think. And, he, and I'll tell you why I didn't think he was very clear. He might have said those words that we're talking about a minority, but let me develop the point. Antisocial behaviour is on the rise, and that has been discussed today. But it is indicative of bigger issues in our society. Now, my experience in my previous job before becoming an MSP as well tells me that nine times out of ten, the root issue, and this was what Mr Simpson didn't mention, and had he mentioned it, I wouldn't have been standing up to speak today. The main issue that leads to these societal disorders is poverty. Poverty caused by his UK government. A, sen a sense of hopelessness and helplessness amongst our young people. It's not excusing the behaviour. I've, I've said that, and I'm happy to go back to that. But if we're going to have a conversation on this, the conversation can't be devoid of that. Then add COVID into the mix. This is a group of young people that have experienced nothing like... The, the, we've not experienced anything like they have. You'd probably have to go back to the Second World War to find a generation that have experienced such disruption to their lives. No mention of it. So that's why... I, I'm saying that I don't think you made it clear, because had you brought in those factors, I would have said, OK, it's something he's quite passionate about, but I, he's, he, he's made reference to these. So I think that any actions that we take here, you know, any actions we take as a government or as a society, must have solutions in mind. We must be thinking about what our young people can do, what they can invest in, you know, because they've got nothing. They've got absolutely nothing just now. Youth work is an answer. I'll take this opportunity. I know it's not this minister's portfolio, but I'll take this opportunity to say that I think that in the upcoming budget, youth work has to be looked at as a, as a possible solution here, enhancing the services around youth work, you know, as, as something that we could possibly do. Because when youth work's done well and it's done good, it does keep young people a, away from getting involved in bother. And I want to say that I, I put my money where my mouth is. I've been contacted by supermarkets in my constituency who are experiencing antisocial behaviour. It's not the same as buses, I agree, but it is antisocial behaviour. And I'm calling a meeting early in the new year. But part of that meeting I've been very clear on and bringing in the agencies, the organisations. Uh, these meetings aren't going to vilify... I think I'm nearly out of time, sorry. The, the, they're not going to vilify young people. We're going to have to find solutions. Councils and other people need to find solutions for our young people. So, presiding officer, I, um, I didn't, as I said, I didn't intend to speak, but... Yeah, I, I'm glad I have, because it's important that young people's voices are heard in this parliament as well. Ben McPherson and Daniel Johnson did bring that in, I accept, but I'd already pressed my button by that point. But also, I think it's really, really important that we see this in the context that it deserves. It is a serious problem, it is a serious issue, and folk shouldn't need to put up with issues on public transport. But we need to see it in the round, and young people's voice needs to be heard too. Thanks.
Thank you, Mr McGregor. And I now call Alexander Burnett, uh, around four minutes, Mr Burnett. Uh, thank you, Deputy Secretary. I will start by thanking my colleague uh, Graham Simpson for bringing this issue to debate. Now, as other members have raised, so many of us have heard about examples in our constituencies uh, of young people travelling around to cause havoc under the Scottish Government's three bus travel scheme for those ages under 22. Uh, and I'd like to recognise with my colleagues, we are talking about a minority uh, of young people. Uh, we are uh, accepting that it is not confined uh, to young people. Uh, and we are looking to find uh, remedies uh, to uh, manage uh, the behaviour of a minority of people. We are not talking uh, about the wider uh, uh, benefits uh, to young people that the scheme has brought. Now, I only wish to raise one point, which I recently rose to, wrote to the Cabinet Secretary about, detailing a recent incident at Deeside Rugby, a club I've long had an interest in. Now, a group of teenagers had travelled out from Aberdeen, taking advantage of the SNP's free travel scheme, but with no productive or beneficial purpose in mind. They barged into the clubhouse, banged on the windows, and threw insults at members. They moved on to other facilities in the area, including the church, and were clearly only intent on a troublemaking spree. Now, due to social media trends, we are seeing an increase in, in this behaviour. Young people, some and a minority of young people, travelling simply to cause carnage in areas they previously could not access. And this is all at the same time as our rural communities are being disadvantaged with low police numbers and station closures. And police officers across the northeast are stretched thin enough and simply do not have the resources to respond to these vandals who are effectively only out to cause disruption and havoc. So I join my colleagues in asking the Scottish Government what repercussions will they be putting in place to deter this rising trend in antisocial behaviour by a small minority? And what will they do to support Police Scotland to keep our community safe from this kind of behaviour? Thank you, Mr Burnett. And I call Fiona Hislop to respond to the debate minister at around seven minutes, please. President Officer, I also thank uh, Graeme Simpson for bringing this debate to the Chamber and everyone who has taken part, the very thoughtful contributions. I appreciate the support from members for this very popular and much used policy of free bus uh, travel for under 22s. And I'd like to be very clear at the outset that the vast majority of young people use the free bus pass travel responsibly. And I want to start by outlining the very important benefits that the Young Persons Free Bus Travel Scheme is delivering. This morning, I visited Wester Hales High School to celebrate over 100 million bus journeys having been made through the scheme since its launch. I had the pleasure of hearing directly from young people how free bus travel is opening doors for them, helping their families save money and embedding sustainable travel choices for the next generation. And these young people's uh, pupils told me that they could go to more sports training sessions, improving performance, get part-time jobs, visit family members and their grandparents more often. Today sees the publication um, of the launch evaluation of the scheme. The review shows it is reducing travel costs, encouraging a shift towards public transport from private car use and improving access to social leisure education and employment opportunities. And this is encouraging and important progress during both the cost of living crisis and the global climate emergency. And I'm sure you'll all join me in encouraging young people right across Scotland who haven't yet applied to do so now and join the over 700,000 under 22s who are already benefiting. And while it's important to remember that the vast majority of young people are using the scheme appropriately, it's not my intention to minimise the concerns raised today, today which do deserve attention and collective action. Antisocial behaviour is unacceptable in all contexts and I'm grateful to members for sharing how their constituents have been impacted today. And I, I do note the number of um, Edinburgh and Lothian MSPs who have spoken. Everyone has the right to travel safely and I recognise some of the issues members have spoken about which involve unacceptable behaviour by a minority in our society. And I, th I think Fulton Mackay uh, was uh, appropriate in, in trying to ad address the underlying issues of antisocial behaviour, and I think that was a considered contribution. 
The Scottish uh, Government is committed to tackling all antisocial behaviour. We want everyone to be, be and feel safe in their community, but no single approach will tackle every incident. And that is why we support a range of options, which includes a strong focus on positive diversionary and early intervention activities as appropriate, alongside use of formal warnings, fixed penalty notices and antisocial behaviour orders. However, we must remember that the police, local authorities and other local agencies are responsible for tackling antisocial behaviour at the local level, working with communities, including young people and their carers. Partnership working between these agencies can be very successful in tackling incidents involving buses. An example of this is effective work to tackle antisocial behaviour in Kilmarnock uh, bus station and ongoing collaboration between the Council and the Health and Social Care Partnership. East Ayrshire's Council's Youth Action Team continues to engage with young people and a multi-agency resilience group meets fortnightly to monitor intelligence and community concerns regarding the bus station and the town centre. And I am reassured that this approach continues to support safety in the local community. And while the Young Persons Free Bus Travel Scheme changes how travel is paid for, it doesn't affect operators' conditions of carriage that all passengers must follow. I would encourage anyone witnessing antisocial behaviour to notify bus operators or the local council's antisocial behaviour team and, of course, report all criminal behaviour to Police Scotland. And I think we would all agree that there is no easy solution to reducing the type of incidents we've heard about today. Members have raised the possibility of removing national entitlement cards from young people implicated in antisocial behaviour. However, free bus travel um, is just one of several services provided through the card. There is also a real issue of how and when entitlement would be removed, and I don't believe it would be uh, appropriate for our bus drivers themselves to do so. I can assure members that I have asked officials to look at what temporary digital blocking measures could be used, but I understand that this would require police time and cooperation on identification of offending individuals, increased administrative time and expertise and technological fixes which are not yet apparent. Nonetheless, I undertake to advise uh, members what may be possible, but I also would want to emphasise the point that Ben McPherson made. I would want to be clear that this would not be age-specific because antisocial behaviour occurs uh, amongst the, the population more generally. In addition, the legislation underpinning the current uh, National Concessionary Travel Scheme does not provide a clear mechanism for consideration of removal of travel cards for antisocial behaviour. It states that a card may be removed if an eligible person of any age knowingly allows their travel card to be used by another person or, as Graeme Sisson also relayed, in such other circumstances as Scottish Government ministers may determine. Now, each case would require to be considered on its own merits, and given the nature of the scheme and the original purpose of these powers, which did not include dealing with antisocial behaviour, there will be limits to what can be done. Again, police time and cooperation would be required, and there may be complex interactions with other agencies and frameworks specifically tasked with dealing with antisocial conduct. I will continue to look at what may be possible and appropriate in terms of providing a deterrent or sanction, including looking into some of the suggestions made by colleagues today. Graham Simpson. Um, I just wanted to get on record that I welcome uh, the comments from the Minister that she commits to looking at this um, and coming back to Parliament or, or having discussions uh, in the manner that this debate has been conducted. So I thank Minister. her. So I have been looking at it, and that's why, obviously, I'm relaying to, to Parliament today. And I, I think and recognise the, the ongoing interest that there will be in this, this area. Um, we won't uh, succeed in reducing antisocial behaviour by focusing on bus-related incidents and neglecting the root causes. And over the last year, the Scottish Government and Scottish Community Safety Network engaged nationally to build a robust picture of antisocial behaviour. And the findings reviewing Scotland's approach to antisocial behaviour were published on the 7th of November with the recommendation to focus on prevention through a long-term strategic and sustainable approach and an independent working group on antisocial behaviour has been set up and will report to ministers by the end of 2024 and Transport Scotland will be closely engaged with this. And last week, uh, President Officer, if you can indulge me, I, I took part in the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence with a workshop on women and girls' safety on public transport. And together with over 40 stakeholders, we um, discussed taking forward improvements for women and girls. 
President, officer, I, I do thank everyone for their valuable contributions today. I want to provide assurance that the government and partners are working to tackle the issues raised and the findings of the Young Persons Free Bustle, Bus Travel Scheme uh, published today will uh, inform that. I will be working with bus operators and other key partners to ensure that negative behaviour does not overshadow the truly transformative impact that free bus travel is having and will continue to have. And as the young people at Wester Hills High School said to me today, it gives them more chances, more choices, more opportunities and does help change lives. Let's make sure that the, the experience of the majority is not harmed by the experience of the very small minority. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. That concludes the debate and I suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30.